In this video, we are going to install Open Media Vault on top of Proxmox. Hey, what's up? My name is Janne. In an earlier video, I showed you how you can get large hard drives for less money by shucking external hard drives. In this video, it's finally time to put them to good use. I have an old HP microserver running in the corner of my home office. It has a dual core processor, 10 gigs of RAM and 4 hard drives. The 250GB hard drive that it came with contains the Proxmox installation. Then it also has a 3TB Western Digital Red hard drive for general storage. The two 8TB hard drives that I have shucked form a mirrored ZFS pool and they will be used for data storage in the Open Media Vault. I know some of you might want to say that you shouldn't really run a hypervisor with only two cores, but I want to be flexible and try out different things, so that's why I have chosen to run the Open Media Vault as a virtual machine. The main purpose of the server is to act as a network storage, but I want to be able to do some experiments also. Now let's jump to the computer. You can start by going to openmediavault.org and there you can download the ISO file for Open Media Vault. Here is my Proxmox web console. I have configured a storage for ISO files. So let's upload the installer for Open Media Vault. Next we will need to create a new virtual machine. So click create VM. I'm going to name this Open Media Vault. Then select the installer from the ISO storage. Create a hard disk for the OS installation. I'm using 10 gigabytes. And I assign one CPU. I'm going to increase the memory amount allocated for the virtual machine to 6 gigabytes. The more you give, the better performance you will have. The network settings can be at the default values. Then just click finish. Now let's add some additional hardware. The Open Media Vault installation requires two disks. One for the system and another for the storage. So we'll need to add another hard disk for this storage. I'm going to use my ZFS pool storage which has 7 terabytes of space. And I'm going to allocate the majority of the storage to this virtual machine. Now we can click start. And then go to the console. Here we are in the Open Media Vault installation. The installer asks you to set the language and local settings. I'll leave the host name as Open Media Vault and also keep the domain at the default value. Then set the password for the root account. The installer detected that we have more than one storage device. So we will need to select the correct disk, which is the one with 10 gigabytes of space. I will fast forward the rest of the installation. Next we will need to log in with the root credentials that we defined during installation. We can use the IP command to get the IP address of the virtual machine. Now we can navigate to that address on the browser. 
and we greet it with the Open Media Vault web interface. The default credentials are admin and Open Media Vault. If we go to the general settings, we can change the web administrator password. Now we are not using the default credentials anymore. Next you will need to create a new file system for the storage drive. So go to the file systems menu under storage and click create. And select the hard drive and give it a descriptive name. Click OK and and Open Media Vault will partition the drive. And now the file system has been created successfully. Now that the storage has been created, we need to mount it to make it accessible. So select the drive and click mount. Click apply to make the configuration take effect. And accept the confirmation dialog. Next we can create a shared folder. So go to access rights management and shared folders. Click add to add new one. I will call this backup. We can select the drive that we just mounted. Here you can set the user permissions for the drive. I will give users read and write access and no access to others. And hit save. Again, click apply and accept. Now let's create a new user. Give it a name and a password. Hit save. And apply. Now let's make this visible on the Windows side. So, go to the services and enable the Samba share. Hit save. And apply the settings again. Now that we have the Samba share enabled, let's create a new share. In the shares tab, click add. Select the folder that we just created, or you can create a new folder also from here. You can choose whether guest access is allowed or not, and also set other parameters such as read only and so on. I'm going to use the default values, so I just hit save. Again, I need to apply the changes. Now let's open the file explorer. If I go to the network, I can see that Windows has detected the Open Media Vault machine. So I can either double click this, or I could also use the address bar to access the machine. It will ask for the credentials, so give the username and password that you defined earlier. And we have the backup folder now visible. I can create a new file. And make some changes. 
and it works as expected. You can configure FTP, NFS and RSync access in a similar way if you need them. So that's how you can install Open Media Vault on top of Proxmox. If you like this video then like it and consider subscribing. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye.